Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Hakeem Dermish, Matt Norland are coming to you from Houston, where Zach Eady has been named Naismith Player of the Year as he continues to rack up the postseason accolades. He's the first Purdue player to win the Naismith Player of the Year since Glenn Robinson in 1994. Also won AP Player of the Year, receiving 57 of the possible 58 votes. Led the nation with 27 double-doubles, 22 points, 13 rebounds, 2 blocks per game. This was really a formality, Matt, for Zach Eady to win Naismith Player of the Year. Of course, he wanted to be playing in Houston for a national championship, but he still gets the Naismith Player of the Year award, which is very deserving. He's an incredible player, and uh, he was our CBS Sports Player of the Year. He was a unanimous choice for for uh, for first team All American at CBS Sports, and to win a Smith Player of the Year, it just attacks on the uh, the final award in this incredible uh, incredible season for Edie. No, it did not end the way that Purdue wanted it to end. Obviously, uh, going down in the first round to a 16 seed, but I tell you what, Edie's the first player in NCAA history since blocks became an official stat back in the 80s to have at least 750 points, 400 rebounds, 70 blocks, and 50 assists in a season. He was he was a force. He, he made the humongous jump to go from incredible and productive Big Ten player now to being just a guy who is undeniable at this point in terms of how good he is. And so it's a reflection on the entire season, not just what might have happened and what did happen in the NCAA tournament. Well, that makes now the last five guys to have won this award to not play for a national title game. You go back, Zach Eady, Oscar Shibwe, Luca Garza, Obi Toppin, and Zion Williamson. Of course, there was no tournament in 2020. The last guy that played for a national title that won the Naismith was Jalen Brunson in 2018. It's incredible when you look at how good he was for Purdue this season. But when you look at what this means for him, what, what does this mean for him and Purdue winning this award? You know, it's the latest example. I mean, with Edie in particular winning the award, uh, you know, that this has become big man you, and I, I do think it's important for Purdue going forward. It, we got to find out if, if Edie is going to stay or go. He's, he's, not a, he's not likely to be a first-round NBA pick. I think he would probably go in the second round if he decided to go. Uh, Matt Painter has specialized in having just tremendously productive big men, but none of them have been as good as Edie. And so overall, you, you know, it's, it's, it's a big statement. It's something to be proud of. Uh, it does come amid, you know, this weird season for Purdue when it was rated as one of the best teams for most of the season. But after, you know, making the run in the Big Ten tournament, getting that one seed, which is a rarity for a program like Purdue, after doing all of that, falling just short of even making a bigger run and going down to FDU, you know, we can't deny that it is, it is, there's, I don't know if there's a level of awkwardness, awkwardness to this, Hakeem, but he did not have the exclamation point. As you said, uh, didn't, you know, get to a Final Four. We had had that recently as well with a number of different players, but Zach Eady is incredible. I featured him on the site earlier this year, um, spoke with his mom. He's had an amazing journey, someone who is, played organized basketball for all of you know four a little over four years at this point and for him to have made this progression is incredible uh he's an outstanding person outstanding player and i'd love to see him return if he does return he should be the preseason national player of the year why wouldn't he uh you know it stands to reason he would only get better after one of the most dominant seasons statistically we've seen from a big man who came in the past couple of decades it's great to rack up all these awards individually but for Zach Eady, he would trade all of these awards, the CBS Sports Player of the Year, the AP Player of the Year, the Naismith Player of the Year, to be here in Houston. Because what's unfortunate, we as sports fans are super critical, right? We'll look, we'll look at Zach Eady, 7'4", dominant big man at Purdue. But we're going to remember this season for what they didn't do was not getting out of the first round, losing to FDU. And to me, it's like it's postseason. That's when, when, when you've got to make a name for yourself. And I get it. Zach Eady has made a name for himself at college basketball. Big Ten player of the year. Dominant force. But when you don't win in the postseason and you're expected to do that, people go, hmm, not only it's a busted bracket, is this, is, is this kid a bust? Well, I, that's, that's kind of more discussion for the next level. I get, I get that. Yeah. But if he does come back, I mean, it does set up a potentially tremendous redemption story. Now, it's not exactly the same, but we did see Virginia lose to a 16 in 2018, come back, win the national championship in 2019, and Purdue could 
have the roster. I, in my opinion, Purdue will have a roster if Ed does return, and you got to consider NIL into all this as well. He's Canadian born, so actually, how the way about he is he is able to garner name, image, and like his compensation is not as easy as players that are born in the United States. That is a factor, probably, in terms of whether he will stay or will he go. But if he stays, we do have a very. Uh, a very easy story in terms of people know who Zach Eady is. Going into next season, it would be a very good thing for college basketball. And, yes, and on some level for him and for Purdue and for Matt Painter, the pressure would be on Hakeem. Can this group make a huge run uh, and, and go deeper into the tournament and be one of the, the best Big Ten teams we've seen in recent years? Seven foot four. Who would you compare him to? Past, present, college, NBA? Uh, I, I guess on a certain in terms of how he plays like there's there's a it's somewhat because of the size there's a little bit of Yao Ming but he's got he he is an entity unto himself I mean there there just isn't a player that is that does what he does at his size the footwork distribution has improved as a leader overall and his skill level see the thing to me and this is what I highlighted in the feature I wrote earlier this season the skill level has significantly jumped every single year as he's gotten better. He's just gotten better and better. So as dominant, and he was dominant at points this season, for much of the season, as dominant as he was, I, the, there is the potential for, for this group to be even, for him to be even better with the group that Purdue brings back, including those key freshman guards, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, who will be sophomores and will be very critical in the team, uh, the Boilermakers, you know, being nationally ranked and, and fighting for Final Four contention again. Well, you know I love redemption stories because we saw in 2018 Virginia lose to UMBC, the first one seed to lose to a 16 seed, and then they come back the next season with a national championship. Hey, Purdue gets knocked out by FDU, the second 16 seed to beat a one seed. Hey, it could happen, right? It's mm -hmm. been done before. It can. Yeah. We'll see. Zach Eady, the first Purdue player to win the Hastings Player of the Year since Glenn Robinson in 1994, the big dog. And now another big player wins it for Purdue. Much more ahead on CBS Sports HQ. For Matt Norlander, I'm Hakeem Dermish. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.